Good afternoon, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends of ASEAN, and Eid Mubarak to those who celebrate. I'm Ted Osius. I'm the President and CEO of the U.S. ASEAN Business Council. USABC is proud to be one of the co-hosts of today's program, along with our colleagues at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, U.S. Department of Commerce, and the Executive Office of the President of the United States. It is an honor and a privilege to welcome you to the U.S. ASEAN Special Summit event with business leaders. I can't tell you how happy I am to be able to say this to you in person and to be in the presence of such a distinguished and historic delegation from ASEAN for the first such event hosted by the United States since the Sunnyland Summit in early 2016, more than six years ago. I'm very pleased to welcome the heads of delegation from Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, and the ASEAN Secretariat. And leaders are still coming in. Uh, I hope you'll bear with us as leaders still uh, still come in. They're coming over from uh, the capital. I wanted to take just a moment to extend my condolences to Prime Minister Hun Sen on the recent passing of your brother, Hun Neng. We sincerely appreciate your keeping your trip to Washington amid this family tragedy. It is also a great honor to welcome CEOs and senior business leaders to today's discussion, including representatives from AES, Boeing, Chevron, Chubb, ConocoPhillips, Energy Capital Vietnam, Google, Marriott, Qualcomm, and Visa. ASEAN is the most consequential region for America's future. Our fourth largest goods export mar market and the United States is ASEAN's second largest trading partner. ASEAN is also our largest investment market in the Indo-Pacific. U.S. foreign direct investment exceeds $338 billion, more than our country has invested in China, India, Japan, and South Korea combined. G given that ASEAN has the third largest population in the world, with more than half under the age of 35, American businesses see ASEAN as one of the most dynamic, interesting business growth opportunities on the planet. All in all, this relationship all in all, this relationship with ASEAN supports more than 600,000 American jobs. And even in challenging circumstances, U.S. businesses' commitment to the region remains steadfast. The ongoing political and economic crisis in Myanmar is a real concern to all of us, and through the Council's nonprofit arm, our members have come together to establish a Myanmar scholarship fund, which will financially support hundreds of Burmese students in the United States whose higher education may have been disrupted. American industry recognizes just how much ASEAN matters to America and how much America matters to ASEAN. We will hear today from top business leaders in energy, technology, finance, manufacturing, travel, and hospitality on how the American business community could further strengthen this U.S.-ASEAN relationship and support ASEAN's resilient and sustainable recovery. <laughs> It is now my distinct privilege to introduce U.S. Secretary of Commer Commerce Gina Raimondo to deliver keynote remarks. Secretary Raimondo was formerly the 75th governor of Rhode Island and its first female governor. And in addition to being a former business owner herself, 
she is also keenly focused on the ASEAN region, which makes her a perfect host to kick off today's discussion. And I would remind you, anyone who needs to, please put on your headphones so that you can hear uh, every word of, of what uh, Secretary Romando has to say. Madam Secretary, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ambassador. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is with great excitement that we welcome you all here this afternoon. Uh, I have had the opportunity to visit the region and meet with many of you and uh, my counterparts and speak with ministers. And I can say uh, we are all very enthusiastic about our relationship uh, with ASEAN and committed to ASEAN centrality and inclusivity. In, in my travels to the region, I have heard you speak about the principle of ASEAN centrality. And today, as you will hear from me, as you will hear later from President Biden, as I hope you heard earlier uh, when you were at the Capitol, the United States is here to, con to affirm America's commitment to that principle. And I also want to thank the CEOs from American Industry who are here this afternoon. It's a great pleasure to have all of you here. Um, I'm looking forward to the discussion that we will have this afternoon as we explore how to strengthen our economic ties and together solve global problems. Uh, today, now, I am announcing that the United States government's largest annual trade mission and business development forum, which is called Trade Wins, will be held in Southeast Asia next year, spring of 2023, in Thailand. <laughs> the forum will feature Thailand as the regional hub and include spin-off visits to five other ASEAN markets. So I, this is a strong uh, evidence of our commitment to the region. I will say this is just one of many efforts that we have underway <laughs> to strengthen our ties with ASEAN member states. We are planning a healthcare mission to Southeast Asia in September of this year and an advanced manufacturing trade mission to the region in October. Uh, and I have spoken with many of you about the importance of working together in these areas, supply chain, manufacturing, clean energy, health care, and this is evidence of our commitment. I welcome ASEAN-wide participation uh, in all that we do. I see we're joined by Prime Minister Lee. Last fall, Singapore Train Minister Gan and I signed a memorandum of understanding to begin work under a new U.S.-Singapore Partnership for Growth and Innovation. This effort will enhance regional collaboration in areas including advanced manufacturing, supply chain resilience, clean energy, the digital economy, and health care. I am pleased to report that we are off to a very strong start with the PGI. I welcome all of you to participate in the initiative and I look forward to undertaking similar initiatives and collaborating in similar ways with other ASEAN states. I'm also very pleased to say that the Commerce Department is excited to welcome Southeast Asian investors and entrepreneurs this June in Maryland uh, to the Select USA Investment Summit, and I would love uh, to have all of you present. An area where we hope to continue deepening our engagement is supply chain disruptions, an area that I think we are all very focused on, uh, especially now post-COVID. Uh, we are looking to work with you and your companies uh, to build a resilient, greater resilience and security in our supply chains. To that point, uh, just this week, I signed a memorandum of cooperation with my Malaysian counterpart, uh, Senior Minister of International Trade, Minister Osman Ali, to work more closely to address semiconductor supply chain issues. He is here today, and we're also joined by Prime Minister Dato Sri. Another key to sustainable economic growth is clean energy. Uh, my Under Secretary Lago will lead a clean energy trade mission to Southeast Asia next month, and we are looking forward to that. 
I also look forward to working more closely with ASEAN member states to explore shared priorities tied to U.S. clean technology export competitiveness, which is a new initiative that I am leading. And it's an initiative that seeks to achieve our shared goals of reducing global greenhouse gas emissions, achieving collective energy security, and creating sustainable economic growth for years to come. It's a, it, something I know all of you are uh, committed to. Together, working together, we can tackle climate change and decarbonization and move closer to our shared and respective net zero goals. Finally, the last area I'll mention, uh, the Department of Commerce is also focused on the digital economy, which is an area I know of great interest to you and to the, comp the U.S. companies that we have joining us today. I'm very pleased uh, that the Philippines and Singapore joined the U.S. last month to announce the establishment of the Global Cross-Border Privacy Rules Forum. Thank you. That forum will help companies demonstrate compliance with internationally recognized data privacy standards. I want again to say that the United States welcomes broad ASEAN participation in that forum. Uh, I'm also very excited to say today that Johns Hopkins School of International Studies a leader in the United States, is launching the U.S. ASEAN Institute for Rising Leaders, which will help public service leaders from all ASEAN countries sharpen their skills. And I'd like to recognize the Dean, Dean James Steinberg, who is here, and thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, it's a fantastic initiative. I have to thank the uh, U.S. corporate Sponsors who are here, Boeing, thank you, UP, UPS, Pharma, JP Morgan, Chase, thank you all. I will say to the other U.S. companies that are here, there's room for you also <laughs> to participate. Uh, we are very excited for this initiative. This initiative is about working together with ASEAN countries to together train the next generation of leaders, the next generation of people uh, rising leaders and public servants who will continue the work and continue on with the work that you have all started. So it, I hope you can tell, those of you who have met me, I have a lot of enthusiasm. I am anxious to work together uh, to put co in concrete initiatives to the mutual benefit of your countries and economies and ours. And we are, very, as I say, committed to ASEAN centrality and committed to working with you and deepening our relationship with all of you. So it's a pleasure for you to be here for this historic summit hosted in the United States, and I look forward to hearing your insights. Um, I want to recognize Your Excellency President Widodo and uh, turn it over to you. Yang mulia para pemimpin ASEAN, para CEOs, terima kasih kepada Sekretaris Perdagangan Amerika Serikat, Ibu Sekretaris Cina Raimundo, dan juga Duta Besar Ted Osius dari US ASEAN Business Council atas penggaraan pertemuan yang sangat penting pada hari ini. Sebagai, koordinat, sebagai negara koordinator, saya bangga menyampaikan bahwa ASEAN telah sukses membangun kawasan dengan pertumbuhan ekonomi yang stabil dan damai. PDB ASEAN kini telah mencapai 3,3 triliun US dollar. Namun, ASEAN harus bekerja keras untuk lebih bisa menikmati rantai nilai global agar mampu menaiki tangga kemajuan. Sebagai Presiden G20, Indonesia juga ingin memastikan agar G20 dapat bekerja sebagai katalisator pemulihan ekonomi global, terutama bagi kemajuan negara-negara berkembang. Semua ini membutuhkan kemitraan yang erat antara pemerintah dengan komunitas bisnis. Dan saya berharap para CEOs perusahaan-perusahaan besar Amerika dapat 
membangun kerjasama yang konkret di G20 dan kerjasama dengan ASEAN, khususnya dengan Indonesia. Hadirin yang saya hormati, dengan populasi 270 orang, 270 juta orang yang mayoritas usia produktif, Indonesia terus melakukan terobosan dan inovasi untuk bisa naik kelas. Dengan wilayah yang luas, kekayaan alam yang berlimpah, Indonesia sangat kaya dalam penyediaan bahan baku industri serta penyediaan energi hijau. Sebagai salah satu negara penghasil biji nikel terbesar di dunia, Indonesia berkembang pesat dalam industri besi dan baja. Dan saat ini Indonesia menjadi negara penghasil besi baja stainless terbesar nomor dua di dunia. Transformasi ini akan diikuti dengan barang-barang tambang seperti tembaga dan bauksit untuk aluminium yang akan menjadi tulang punggung industri energi baru dan terbarukan termasuk baterai litium dan mobil listrik. Selain itu, Indonesia juga sangat kaya dengan potensi energi hijau. Pembangkit listrik tenaga hidro sangat potensial. Ada 4.400 sungai di Indonesia. Juga pembangkit listrik tenaga surya. Juga pembangkit listrik tenaga geothermal yang sangat melimpah. Ada potensi 29.000 megawatt. Untuk geothermal, kami memastikan bahwa produksi barang-barang penting akan dihasilkan dari pembangkit listrik yang ramah lingkungan. Dan kami mengundang para pelaku bisnis Amerika untuk investasi di Indonesia. Hadirin yang terhormat, Indonesia juga serius dalam pengembangan ekonomi digital yang adil dan bermanfaat bagi semua. Di Asia Tenggara, nilai ekonomi digital diprediksi mencapai 330 miliar US dollar pada tahun 2025. Dan di Indonesia sendiri, ekonomi digital diproyeksikan tumbuh 20 persen per tahun, mencapai 146 miliar dolar pada tahun 2025. Saat ini Indonesia memiliki 2.346 startup terbanyak kelima di dunia dengan dua dekakons dan delapan unicorn. Saya sangat mengharapkan kontribusi pebisnis Amerika dalam pengembangan infrastruktur digital, memfasilitasi digital capacity building, serta mendukung kami masuk ke global value chain melalui digitalisasi. Yang mulia para menteri, yang mulia para pemimpin ASEAN, dan para CEOs, saya berharap pertemuan ini menjadi momentum kehadiran kembali Amerika Serikat di kawasan melalui perusahaan-perusahaannya dengan kerjasama yang saling menguntungkan. Kami tunggu Bapak-Ibu di ASEAN, khususnya di Indonesia. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my honor to invite His Excellency Ismail Sabri Yaakob, Prime Minister of Malaysia, to offer a few opening remarks. Thank you very much. <coughs> Honorable ASEAN leaders, Her Excellency Gina Raimondo, U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Her Excellency Ambassador Catherine Tai, United States, Trade representative, distinguished business leaders, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. On behalf of the ASEAN leaders, let me begin by conveying our appreciation to the Honorable Joe Biden, President of the United States, for hosting the U.S. ASEAN Special Summit here in Washington, D.C., marking another milestone in the strategic partnership enjoyed by ASEAN and the U.S. Today, our gathering in person signifies the enduring commitment to the long-standing political 
economic and cultural ties between ASEAN and U.S. that was established more than four decades ago. Undoubtedly, the U.S. is an important strategic partner for ASEAN, and over the years, our collaboration has resulted in firm initiatives and policies that were beneficial to the member states and by extension to the region. I believe that this is an opportune time for us to elevate this strategic partnership to a higher level by exploring opportunities in areas of mutual interest between ASEAN and the U.S., particularly for businesses. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN has evolved into a dynamic and integrated economic powerhouse. This region of more than 661 million population and with a combined GDP of 3.0 trillion US dollar has become the fifth largest economy in the world. While work is being accelerated towards achieving the ASEAN economic community by 2025, we are also committed to cultivating our ties with the U.S. by strengthening our cooperation. At the same time, we are also mindful that we cannot depart from the reality of the global economic conundrum, just as ASEAN member states were recovering from the pandemic-induced shocks, the political instability is waging on the growth momentum. This is in addition to measures designed to control inflation introduced by some economies and slowing growth of major trading partners. Amid this backdrop, backdrop sound policy instruments such as tax incentives, special assistance packages, and facilitative measures for smooth flow of supply chain are more important than ever to support our businesses in facing the uncertainties that expedite the return to pre-pandemic normalcy. In this regard, ASEAN is committed to continue facilitating business operations in the region for the benefit of all. The ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, our major region-wide response to rejuvenate the economy in the region, remains relevant, which the accompanying implementation plan contains specific measures to facilitate trade, services and investment within the region. These efforts are complemented by the initiative under the U.S.-ASEAN Trade and Investment Framework Agreement, which is furthered by the Expanded Economic Engagement E3 Work Plan. Admittedly, activities and programs with regard to promotion of regulatory coherence and addressing trade barriers have allowed for ASEAN member states to strengthen the efficiency of trade facilitation and in term benefited businesses. Case in point, the U.S. Agency for International Development, US, USAID, has worked with ASEAN member states to make the ASEAN single window, ASW, for customs clearance a reality. Through targeted assistance, AMS has managed to fully operationalize the ASW, which simplifies customs procedure, expedites cargo clearance, and reduces trading fee. As a result, businesses have experienced increased trade transparency, transparency and lower costs of doing business. ASEAN is encouraged with the continued support of the U.S. under the existing mechanism for economic recovery, particularly in the digital economy. With ASEAN's digital economy is projected to exceed 300 billion US dollar by 2025 
and with 915 million active mobile connections, which is almost 1.5 times of the population, ASEAN has becoming the world's fastest growing internet market and one of the largest digital economies in the world. Certainly, greater collaboration in the digital space should lead to a robust digital economy ecosystem in the region and pave the path of resilient growth. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as the largest foreign direct, direct investor and the second largest trading partner, U.S. is an important partner to ASEAN. In 2020, 35 billion U.S. dollar or 25.5% of the total ASEAN foreign direct investment inward flows was contributed by the U.S. In addition, despite global trade registering deficit in 2020, ASEAN-US total two-way trade reached 308.9 billion US dollar, an increase of 4.6% as compared to 2019. I strongly believe that there is a plenty of upside for the foreseeable future. As a matter of fact, the pandemic has made clear the importance of international trade and cooperation as well as the interlinkages of regional supply chain. Therefore, the U.S. should adopt a more active trade and investment agenda with ASEAN, which will benefit the U.S. economically and strategically. Befittingly, ASEAN is, is at the heart of a network of plurilateral and bilateral free trade agreement, FTAs, in the Indo-Pacific region. Of significance, here is the entry into force of the Regional Economic Comprehensive Partnership, or RCEP, agreement for many of the signatories. ASEAN sees that RCEP presents an important tool to invigorate business, businesses and economic activities through a marked reduction in barriers to trade across the region. Beyond improving the ways of doing business, RCEP would spark the creation of new regional supply chain apart from strengthening existing networks, thereby boosting the growth of domestic <coughs> businesses as they immerse into the global trading system, ecosystem. As it is, there are over 6,200 U.S. companies operating in ASEAN. Many of these companies use ASEAN as a production platform to export not only within the region but to other parts of the world. To further their growth, I would encourage the U.S. businesses to tap into the largest FTA with a market covering 15 countries comprising more than 2.3 billion or nearly a third of the global population and world GDP and take advantage of the vast investment opportunities presented by this mega trade agreement. Undeniably, ASEAN is at the heart of global supply chain. In 2020, close to 30% of ASEAN export was electrical machinery, equipment and accessories, or in other word, in other word, components that are vital in electronic devices, vehicle and healthcare equipment, among others. Much of FDI in ASEAN is connected to global value chain activity or regional production network that evolve, involve infra and inter-firm linkages. Taking this factor into consideration and cognizant of the adverse impact of the pandemic, AMS are accelerating the development of physical infrastructure related to Industry 4.0. Technologies, importantly, 
ASEAN recognizes that businesses play a catholic, catalytic role in the transformation process as users, technology providers, manufacturers, trainers, influencers of SMEs, and ecosystem enhancers. As a matter of fact, prominent U.S. companies have been actively contributing in this sphere, and we hope that many other companies will invest in this region to advance industrial transformation, thus ensuring effective participation in global value chain. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN welcomes the announcement by President Biden at the 9th ASEAN-US Summit of the intent to provide, to provide up to 102 million US dollars in new initiatives to expand the US-ASEAN strategic partnership. This underscores the commitment of the administration towards ASEAN centrality and by furthering the existing cooperation in areas of mutual interest, we could further boost the economic ties between ASEAN and the U.S. Notably, one of your future initiatives is dedicated to tackling the climate crisis and keeping the urgent goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius within reach. This is in line with the sustainability agenda that is being furthered by ASEAN. Just recently, ASEAN adopted a circular economy framework for the AEC in preparing the region to the resilient and future ready. Through the framework, ASEAN is committed to building circular economy environment by transforming the production and consumption pattern of its community to minimize waste. Additionally, ASEAN is also exploring carbon neutrality initiative to support green and low carbon future for the competitive and resilient region. It is worth noting that transformation to green economy and development of quality and climate resilient <coughs> infrastructure requires investment in human and capital. For this reason, targeted capacity building programs and technical assistance by the U.S. could be beneficial to narrow the development gap among the ASEAN member states. Moreover, moreover, we are witnessing the increase of businesses in the U.S. and ASEAN embarking on the sustainability journey for they know that not doing so would risk them losing relevance and market share. In this regard, ASEAN strongly encourages businesses to assume a complementary role to improve the quality of investment by institutionalizing ESG environment social governance principle in corporate strategy and strengthening innovation capacity to address the social, environmental, and economic needs of the people. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN is cognizant of the Indo-Pacific Economy Framework initiated by the U.S. and is of the view that it is in line with the increasing convergence of interests on bilateral, regional, and global issues. However, it is pertinent that such an initiative is built on ASEAN centrality and plays a complementary role to the ongoing cross-sectoral collabora collaborations between ASEAN and the U.S. In closing, I would like to highlight that ASEAN is developing rapidly and will offer many opportunities to the bold and enterprising. Private sectors is the heart of economy, and by working together, I'm confident that we can build a better tomorrow for ourselves, our companies, and our people. 
With that, I would like to reaffirm that ASEAN looks forward to further deepen relation with the U.S. in all pillars of cooperation for an inclusive, sustainable and resilient economic growth. Thank you. Well, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, the members of the media. We love you, but it's now your time to exit the room as we continue our closed session. I am Myron Brilliant, the Executive Vice President of the U.S. Chamber, the largest business organization in the United States. We're proud and honored to be joining forces, so to speak, with Ambassador Ted Osius and the U.S. ASEAN Business Council and the members of our business community together to host this wonderful event and this opportunity uh, to hear from leaders of the ASEAN region. Let me just say at the outset that uh, we commend the Biden administration, President Biden, for bringing all the ASEAN leaders here to Washington, D.C. We've got to continue to do this in the future. And we also commend uh, Secretary Raimondo for her comments, her encouragement of the region and the importance strategically of the ASEAN region, your commitment to bring a mission there next year. We support that, the U.S. Chamber, U.S. ASEAN Business Council. I want to obviously recognize Ambassador Tai. I'll have more to say about that in a few minutes. And, of course, Special Envoy.